Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1.6 scale M4A3 105mm Sherman tank. As we can see, since the last video the model has progressed a lot and is practically nearing completion. At first glance we can see that the tank has been fully painted and weathered. The tank's base coat is olive drab and all the tank's markings are painted on via homemade stencils. The tank suspension has also been painted and completed. All the weathering has been added to all of the components. Like, for instance, the rubber tires show age and wear. And the rear idler here has its steel edges exposed. Also exposed are the steel return rollers. On Sherman tanks with the VVSS suspension, these components are not rubber rimmed and are steel. Furthermore, we can see that all the Zerk fittings have been painted red. This is where the crew would lubricate the bearings via grease gun. The tank's track has also been added. This track is a new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line. This track here represents the T49 3 bar steel cleat. Track here is all casted in resin and is fully functional. The tank will roll if pushed. These tracks are very detailed and a lot of time was spent into making these tracks as detailed as possible. A lot of machining work was done to the teeth. You see they have all of the detail for the retaining lock pin as well as the Lock nut here on the inside portion of the track. Track is all resin and is held together via two steel uh, rods per link. These tracks are designed to fit around the Panzerwerk resin Sherman VVSS sprocket and mesh nicely with the teeth. The track does give the tank a unique appearance, and this is the first full set of T49 links on the 1.6 scale market. As mentioned in a previous video, these suspension systems are full functional and will flex if placed on their uneven terrain, which will work well with the workable track links. On the tank's rear portion here, we can see that basically the entire back has been done. The tank's tow hitch has been added along with chain retaining pin. The tank's spare track racks have been fully equipped with spare T49 track links. These are the exact same track links that are used on the suspension. The links are in the workable spare track folding racks and are removable. Two resin wing nuts will be added later. On the tank's metal folding rack, you can see the addition of the gun cleaning kit has been added. The gun cleaning kit here is removable and is telescoping. The, all these rods here thread together and would be able then to swab the main gun. This is done in case I need to make a diorama in the field of a scene of the crew cleaning the gun barrel. In the rear portion here we can see that the tank's cat's eye tail lights have been added. If you also notice that the one on this side here is red and the one on this side here has been blacked out. This is standard on pretty much all World War II USAFV. Beneath the folding rack is the engine starter crank. This is metal and has been painted and weathered. Also added are the rest of the tank's Pioneer tools. We can see here a large wrench. This would be used to unscrew the nuts on the boogie wheels. This is retained via a chain and a pin. Over here we have the tank's sledgehammer. Axe. Pickaxe head. Shovel. 
pickaxe handle and crowbar. All the wooden handles you see here are made out of real wood and are fully treated. On this side of the vehicle here we can see two more pieces of the gun's cleaning kit as well as underneath we can see ranging poles. These ranging poles would be used, would be assembled, they all thread together, they would be assembled and they would be stuck out in front of the vehicle and they could use this for indirect fire. When not in use, the rods simply lock back onto this rack. And are stowed. Moving our way to the engine, or engine deck that is, the intakes have been painted and weathered. The tank's fuel caps have also been added, and they are underneath the armored fuel cap covers. The retaining pins with their chain, and underneath there, exposes the fuel cap. The fuel caps themselves are machined out of aluminum and are left as is. However, they have been weathered. All of these fuel caps have the same system. You pull the pin and you lift and you can see the detail that's beneath. Tanks fire extinguisher handles have been painted red and are now more visible. Moving our way to the front of the vehicle we can see the addition of the tank's bow M1919. On this model I made the machine gun pivoting. And on the headlights we can see the insert of the clear resin headlight insert which leaves for a very realistic appearance. And over here the chains have been added to the headlight cover cap plugs. When the headlights were not be in use they would be removed, stowed inside the vehicle and this plug here will be pulled out and inserted into the position where the headlight was, thus plugging up the hole. Moving our way to the side of the vehicle, we can see that the addition of the tank side view mirrors have been added. The mirrors are real glass mirrors and give for a very realistic look. On the tank's hatches, all of the periscope details have been added to the hatch interiors. This here is the Panzerwerk resin periscope, as was mentioned earlier, and the periscope prism insert has been added. The prism itself is, solid, is a solid resin casting and has been painted to reflect out of the glass. These prisms are on all of the tank's hashes, including the two front and the tank's commander's copula. The tank's loader's hatch has also been painted and weathered, as we can see here. Also of note, we can see the tank's searchlight has been completed. Now, next, a cover cap and chain will be added to this little loop over here. In addition to that, we could also see on the mantle the addition of the coaxial M1919. This barrel stub here is included with the Resin 105mm conversion kit. On our way to the tank's MP48 spring base, we can see that the porcelain insulator has been painted and we can see that the neural tips are in progress. These should be painted and finished off very soon. Moving our way to the tank's M23 cradle mount. For the cradle mount I mentioned earlier I was using the white metal kit from Armor Packs. Armor Packs is a British based 1 6 scale detail component company and offer a wide line of detail components for Allied and German vehicles. Their products are very nice and are mostly made in cast metal and as well as resin. The cradle also comes with a nice set of assembly instructions. They're very basic, and uh, after building a few of these, though, you pretty much get the hang of it. It becomes second nature. 
the mount itself is very realistic and that it assembles a lot like the real one. The tray here gets mounted to the cradle via these two rails which the box mount will just slide and snap into like so. The box hinge here, fully functional and pivots with the cradle. To assemble the cradle mount, I spot soldered everything together. This metal is solderable, however, if you are not experienced with a soldering iron, you should be very wary. This metal can heat up very quickly and melt on you, which could be a problem. However, if you do not know how to solder and you need to assemble one of these, you could use standard super glue, like a thick super glue should work just fine. One modification that I did make to the kit cradle is the way the, the cradle assembles. The kit wants you to use, supplies you with these small white metal pegs here that would be used over here to, to connect the two together. Um, I found, from my experience, that it was best to replace the peg with a small slot screw like this one here. The slot screw, in my opinion, threads in nice and gives you a nice secure hold. To use the screws, you have to make an adjustment to the counter spring case over here. To mount the case to the gun mount, I had to make a countersink into the case itself with a, a, a drill bit, and I then solder it, or you could glue it, to the cradle itself. That way, it covers up the slot screw. It's in its proper location and it pivots with the mount as it should. On the side of the mount, you see these small little loops. These loops are included with the kit and these are used for the retaining chains. For the pins that hold the gun to the mount as well as the travel lock pin here which would lock the mount in the travel position so the gun doesn't flop around when in transit. These will be added along with their chains after the gun is painted and also after the mount is painted and weathered as well. To install the mount to the tank's pinnel mount, it simply just gets inserted in place. Once the gun mount is painted, the gun will be added. Pretty much all that remains to complete the model will be the completion of the machine gun and the pinnel mount the cover cap for the searchlight and the cover cap for the pinnel mount. After that the model will be complete. And that concludes this project update video for this 1-6 scale M4 A3 105mm Sherman tank. Be sure to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more projects and more detailed upgrades. Thank you.